And welcome back to another GAC podcast where we talk about games, anime, computers, and collectibles, but not necessarily all that in a week. I am your host, Harrison, and to my left... Hi, I'm Faust. And to my right... James. And we're going to talk about all the interesting news for this last week. So, does anybody have anything they want to start with? Well, I think the big the big fan fangasm kind of thing that we can really say that dropped was we got about five little teaser trailers for the Ghosts in the Shell live action movie. Okay. That um is of course confirmed Scarlett Johansson is in this movie. Um from what I've seen in the teasers it looks to be um basically taking the story of at least the first movie, the, cool. the animated simultaneous Japan America release anime. Um and there's some doing something with that. I'm a little reserved because of what they did with Aeon Flux. Um, yeah, the Aeon Flux was just an uh, awful mess. Unfortunately, there's a lot of cultural influence in Ghost in the Shell that if a Western studio is taking it over, they're probably going to whitewash a lot of that out, and it's going to miss out on the allure that is Ghost in the Shell, ultimately. But other than that, I'm excited. It looks like it's going to be pretty at the very least. That is true. Yeah. Well, pretty. I mean, mm-hmm. they do have Scarlett Johansson, so they don't have to try too hard. There's going to be enough people that are going to go just because of that. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. We'll see what they do there. I mean, basically, they're taking Japanese animation and trying to convert it into live action. And we know the movie industry has done an awful job trying to take something from Japan mm-hmm. and try to make it live action. Our like, comics. Exactly my point. Like, they've they've done all right with comics as far as bringing those stories to life now staying faithful to the source material i'm not going to get into that argument because there there are some movies there 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 are parts of movies that are hit and there are parts of movies that are missed that's that's beside the point here what we're looking at is um i do say that it does stand a chance of being at least visually translated well but staying faithful, once again, to the source material, especially as culturally charged as it is, as politically charged as it is. I don't know um, what you're talking about, Martha. <laughs> these things just don't, <laughs> these things don't, just don't stand a chance of actually showing in a westernized Ghost in the Shell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot there was a, some political charge with Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if Hollywood's going to do well with that. Usually they have a tendency to slant very hard Mm -hmm. you know and uh if they don't like it they'll take it out if it doesn't cross their message yeah but i mean even then i mean it's it's ghost in the shell itself while it does present a lot of good human philosophy and argument Mm -hmm. about like what when we've reduced when we've specialized a human body to the point where the only thing that really remains is like a couple of brain cells or something like that can we still consider that human can we still consider that kind of life humanity that's the kind of argument that these these stories ultimately bring up but the standalone complex series and the better part of the actual movie and even the second movie have always had this sort of underlying current of the existing political arguments and and societal ramifications of these things and that's where it gets kind of difficult they say that if you want to prove that you are fluent in japanese even though it's not your first language then you have to watch ghost in the shell uh, subbed without the subtitles and if you can understand even half of what's going on then you're probably fluent in japanese because it's just that complex hmm. and i don't know if that's going to come through into this movie i don't know how well that's going to make the transition and that's where i'm kind of reluctant now yeah. every, the debate about whether scarlett johansson can or cannot play motoko kusanagi don't care she's an, she's an actress she's she's stunning motoko kusanagi is stunning she's an action star Motoko Kusanagi is an action character. I I think it's a it, it's, as long as she applies herself to this uh, role as she applies herself to any other role, this is gonna she's gonna pull it off just well. I'm not gonna say there are people who can't play it better. I'm certainly there is people out there who could play it worse. Um, but that's just a that's a non-issue as far as it is to me. The story is what I'm really concerned about. Well, and this isn't even like you know the worst thing out there. I mm-hmm. mean, I think. If you look at uh, game and anime movies, we've we've seen um, far worse. Yeah, come out uh, over time. So 
Definitely, especially video games. Video games just have this real problem being put onto a cinema screen. Um, right. So, I, I, I mean, this isn't a video game. This is, this is something that has been on movie screens since we were growing up. True, yeah. but ho- so there's hacking of also Hollywood's going to screw it up somehow. Of course, yes. Yeah. Is that, that I mean they. I just want to get that right. I just want to know if they're going to be if they're going to be doing anything with the actual source manga or the the series because that means we have a chance of having the Fuchikoma or Tachikoma showing up, the spider tanks, oh, which I thought were a bunch of amazing technology. Those um, are cool. Yeah. Maybe. So there's your anime for this. Uh, Month. Well, yeah. <laughs> sort of. It's not even for this month. Yeah. I mean, we, we've Week. discussed it yeah, yeah before. Okay. But uh, other things that people consider stupid. Um, did you see? <laughs> oh, that was. Besides your face? I mean, I'm backhanded. Go ahead. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> As, uh, so Apple has managed to get one of the most amazing patents in the world. Mm. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking at this here from The Guardian. So. They Apple has managed to patent a white paper bag made out of recycled material. So, uh, and it's because it's an Apple bag and it's white. It's patented for Apple. So, from the su- the supposition that I make from the little blurb here is that Apple is co- the patent that they're really coming out with is the technology to, to recycle paper to make this bag white without using as much or any bleach, depending. Yes. The, ser- the real serious thing here is that it actually is environmentally conscious to some degree. It, yeah, it is. Because, I mean, typically, I, I guess uh, when you start to use a lot of bleach, it breaks down mm-hmm. and makes the bags more flimsy. And they found a way to make it less flimsy. And But it's just crazy that um, a paper bag has been patented. Patented, yeah. yeah and he's, I'm pretty well, sure there's there's dumber things out there. You know, it's. I'm not what, challenging you to find it. What is the actual term when it says "build a better mousetrap" or something like that? Like, this this is Apple building a better mousetrap, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I I hate to say this, I hate to be the one who's actually supporting Apple in this endeavor or whatever. It's nice to be. It's nice. It's a nice little bit of fluff. This is puff to pull out and be like, Apple's doing another dumb thing in the mountain of dumb things that they do. It, you know, well, this but, fo- this follows along with their iPhones because mm-hmm. there's still no headphone jack. Really? Yeah. Are you, are you seriously still going to cry about that? Yeah. It's not. I know. mean, you know, never mind that it's not exploding. Well, that's you know, and you know, causing fires. Let's, never mind that these are not these two, these two phones that these jugheads are target are arguing about are not even the only phones available on the market right now right there are plenty of really nice phones coming out that don't explode that have headphone jacks that are waterproof that are rugged that will last you for a good long time and won't break the minute you drop it two feet onto a carpeted surface <laughs> ah. i want to see one of these phones <laughs> because i think i've seen so we're using phones. one to record the show right now the next iteration and, of that is even better and it will actually break if you drop it like Two feet. Onto a carpeted surface. Uh, what phone did you drop on the carpeted surface two feet? I have dropped my phone three feet onto a concrete surface, and it shows no blemish whatsoever. Okay, but what, what, what phone did you drop on a carpeted surface that is shattered? Dude, have you seen the, the videos online of the, of the iPhones before they switched to, like, the stronger screens? Yeah. Like, they, they dropped it one foot onto, like, Was a that soft like the surface, iPhone and it was four? just spider cracked. Yeah, like absolutely. Mm. Well, I've dropped. So I've dropped I'm not this, defending them. I just want to know what mm-hmm. which phone it is. I've dropped this LG G5 in the sand, and mm-hmm. it's caused uh, the screen to, to crack and shatter like the iPhones do. But it still caused it to uh, to crack. So mm-hmm. it's you drop almost anything from about three feet. The thing about iTechnology technology is it's really marketed to a gen- to a couple of generations after us. That's what I really think that most of this Mac stuff is doing, mm-hmm. and it, it's working because uh, I remember reading something from tech a tech person working at private school. He was like doing IT at a private school that it was pretty common. Like he ran the computer lab and did the laptop maintenance for the kids and everything like that. Yeah. It was pretty common for kids to willfully destroy the laptops that they had, really good, decent PC laptops, because the thing, the fashion 
was to have a Mac. And so they would destroy it and try to convince their parents that a Mac wouldn't take, wouldn't, would stand up to that kind of abuse. No, that's, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is, I mean, they, even, even back in our day, apples were in schools a lot, mm -hmm. you know, that was Oh the yeah. Thing. I learned how to type on an apple too. Yeah. That yeah. was, I mean, that's just part of the indoctrination. myself thing. at all. Yeah. Yeah. Back in my day. Back in my day. So yeah, I had to do that. I had to type like three letter words and make that little, that little ski climber glam, the bar, gla the bar graph. Or no, the line graph. The line graph, yeah. yeah. That was supposed to represent the mountains and everything. Or Oregon Trail. On Did you have the, to walk in the snow back and forth both ways? Actually, I never had to walk in the snow unless I went out with the purpose of walking in the snow. I did have to ride three miles to the nearest general store to buy comic books. And even then, the only comic books that are available were Foofer and Mad Balls. So, you know, I have, I do know what rural living is like, sir. Yes. Yeah. And just keep in mind, you know, we try not to take swipes at you on this, even though you're our age too, sir. <laughs> just not mentally. So not mentally. So, oh, um, there. Apple, yeah, Apple patenting a new bag technology. That's great. That's fine. I'm pretty sure they tried to make put this out there and not really make a big deal out of it. This wasn't really a press release. This was somebody monitoring Apple's every move and trying to pick the dumbest thing they could yeah. think of. Well, there's lots of people that monitor monitor patents and yeah. copyrights to see what absurd things some company's doing. I mean, we so. had the whole Candy Crush saga where they were patenting the word saga. Yeah. And saga. candy. Yeah. So, oh, and then like, you know, No Man's Sky had to fight in Europe because the word sky was patented uh, or trademarked. And trademarked, yep. There was, um, what was the other one? The React debacle. Oh, the YouTube, yes. The YouTube React thing where somebody tried, they were trying to patent the React video. Well. And the term React. Like they didn't want anybody else using that in their videos. And that did, yeah. Speaking of reacting, mm -hmm. you know. If there's a YouTube debacle, they've been all over it this month. Oh man! So it's just misstep after misstep. Yeah, I swear. the The latest one is YouTube Heroes. They announced a plan to allow people to become YouTube heroes, so that way they can um, basically vote down negative content or or get videos removed or to moderate the community so basically they're trying to get the community to moderate itself and it was hilarious because they put out this little minute 30 video and my god there was so much hate this video sure. within like 12 hours or something got like negative 300 negative 300,000 down votes there was like maybe 17,000 up votes i mean that's in like in like two minutes 12 hours in like 12 hours yeah okay. i mean that that's a lot of that's a lot of hate that's a lot of hate so Community moderation um, has never been really done well and has never been implemented well and has never really been followed well. I mean, giving that kind of power to any community, especially the YouTube community, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. The, uh, it, it's just asking for trouble. And I still – I did do a little research on this. So YouTube itself is still maintaining last say – and anything that gets flagged or whatever. Yeah. And if you become one of these YouTube heroes, you're not immediately given carte blanche to do as you please. You actually, there is a leveling structure. Right. You, it's dependent upon how well you do. That's uh, how, how much power, how much more power you get and how much more weight your statement has, your flag has. Right. Um, I think there's something similar to that they do with uh, CSGO of all things. There's a anti-cheat system where you're given game footage and you watch to see if there's any obvious cheating going yeah. on. And then the more that you point out cheaters and the more you successfully ban cheaters, the more weight your say is given. So there is at least that seems like a pretty good implementation there. The rest of it, I mean, the way that they sell it to people, the way that they make it sound where you know, like all of a sudden the, they're giving more power to the YouTube community. Yeah, I mean, the, I, this is sounding like a dumb idea. It is. I mean, I mean, yeah. there, now, Grant, there's some nice things in it. Like you can actually go in and you can add captions and subtitles to videos, you know. And this is one of the ways you can get points. And the thing is, what, what I'm concerned about is because of the way the system is set up, is you can actually um, game the system, uh, which is what really worries me. Because yeah, find a 10 hour and just copy the complete works of Shakespeare into the subtitles. Yeah, but you yeah. only get one point for that. Or by giving the best answer in the community, will end up 
you know, giving you like 10 points versus just one point. And interesting. So there's a, there's a point structure. Yeah. So basically if you go through, what do you get with these points? Well, it, you go up in levels. So basically e and, yeah. and you get more things like, uh, it looks like right now. Is that even still a thing? Is it? it is. So let, let us know in the comments. Yeah. So now they've made a few stealth changes since this was announced. Like already they made some stealth changes to this program. So Okay. Um, but it looks like basically zero to nine hero points, you get to join the community and access the hero's dashboard. Then at level two, you get to, uh, from 10 to 99 points, you get to learn at exclusive workshops and take part in hero only hangouts from 100 points to 400 points basically this is where it starts to get a little scary you can mass flag abusive videos help moderate content in the youtube heroes community mm -hmm. and i think they they've changed that wording because it was in you know comments moderating comments instead of just the heroes community yeah and then from 400 to 1,000 points is a sneak preview uh, product launches and be able to contact YouTube staff directly. And then as 1,000 plus, you get to apply for the Hero Summit, which nobody's really explained what this Hero Summit is, and test products before they're released. But the thing that has people really, really scared is in that 100-point system where you get a mass flag abusive videos. Mm -hmm. Basically, negative videos or negative comments and all you have to do is subtitle 100 videos. Yeah. Because it's a point per subtitling video. Yeah. Or if you manage to give a really good answer, you get an instant 10 free points. So you could easily get to this 100 points quickly. Mm -hmm. And so, and then also this dashboard opens up. This You get to start, you know, voting. On, Firing shots wildly. Yeah. Uh, I know what the summit regulation. is. Yeah. The summit is when you when you go in person, you meet these people. Oh, that's the guy who's been ratting our videos out. Get him. Mm -hmm. Quite, I mean, <laughs> yeah, quite possibly because I mean the thing is is they're they're crowdsourcing. So nothing would stop you from. I don't like that video. It's negative comment and then blocking it. You, so they did say that one of the things that they changed with their shadow update. Update. Yeah. Is they changed the wording from. Um, moderating negative content okay. to moderating what was the word? They softened that. They, they softened it okay, from yeah, negative right. to I'll find it here in a second. To uh, they they are they more they are more specific. Instead of just saying the blanket term of negative content, okay, they good. are like to um, report inappropriate videos accurately. Yeah. Okay. But that's better. but the problem is is inaccurate is still ambiguous. Inappropriate. Yeah. Or inappropriate is ambiguous. Yeah, I mean, this this goes back to even a couple of weeks or so ago where. They uh, were updating their terms of service a little and started enforcing it more and letting people know that, hey, your video has been demonetized. But when you look at the rules, it's like um, inappropriate content or like too much skin showing. It's like, where's the line? It's not defined. It's very vague. It's like too much skin showing. This is a makeup video. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what's – and one of the arguments was really is like over war. Um, somebody puts out – makes a documentary on – like war, like mm -hmm. stuff that happened uh, for other sides or other countries. You mean like the videos where they did about uh, the reasons of Adolf Hitler going insane? Yeah, like potentially that stuff. Or let's say they're talking about you know what the French did to fight back. You know after they were quickly invaded during World War II, those mm -hmm. videos would instantly get demonetized, even though it was presented as a documentary to provide extra information and. It's because it was inappropriate content underneath their guidelines. Hmm. Uh, a matter of too much skin showing, you know, could also cause it to get demonetized. But it's like, what's the line for too much skin? If if a, if a woman is running around in a bikini top, that gets demonetized because that's not advertiser friendly. But some idiot working out with his shirt off is okay. So there is another community where we are seeing something of this community moderation in effect, and the failings of that moderation as well as Imager has been doing this kind of thing. They've, in, they've instituted a mature content filter and are relying on the community mostly to identify the images that are posted at that are mature, mature content, mm -hmm. mature content, basically skin. Yeah. Okay. You know, naked, naked or next to naked women is okay. mostly what's being flagged. Um, and they're being, relied to, they're being relied to tag that if it does not tag 
if it is not tagged as mature content because there is a filter that you can set on your account that yeah. will, whether or not you want to see this stuff. Um, and lately, anything that's been posted as mature content, as far as I've seen browsing the site, has to have – basically, the person who's posting has to put down in the comments, this is tagged as mature. Quit reporting me. Yeah, I you know I could see that because that that's even happened on YouTube where stuff is flagged as mature, so it's automatically age gated, mm -hmm. um, and it's still getting flagged and t taken down. Or somebody will put out something, even though there's things that are blurred out and everything. Somebody just doesn't like what was said, and it gets flagged and age gated, and ends up losing monetization. And you're putting this again into the hands of these people, and you're giving some of these people more power. Yeah. To have more weight in what they say, and and that's kind of scary. And here's the scarier part. Like, that's scary. This is frightening. This is horrific. So, once again, I refer back to my previous statement. YouTube is maintaining that they will have last say in what, in what counts as a flag video, what happens to it, if it gets demonetized or taken down or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, we know for a fact that they're relying on community moderation, but this seems that what they're doing is just in introducing this as a module to whatever algorithmic crap they've been pulling for the demonetization and everything like that. There's not while. going to be a human at the switch. There's it's going to it's going to go into a math problem and the math problem's going to decide whether whether or not you're allowed to watch this or not. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. Um and that's what's frightening is that all of this community stuff is just going to be plugged into a textbook and basically, you know, you've got You've got this many likes and this many viewers and this many subscribers and you've had this many hits against you and this many people are saying that this video is inappropriate, quote unquote, and this algorithm, this math problem is going to decide whether or not your video deserves to be on YouTube or not. Yeah. And that's just, I don't know exactly what YouTube is trying to, what YouTube started out to be. I don't know what it is that the community thinks it should be. These are very important things. These are this is a conversation that needs to be going on. And really what I need to know what what I think anybody needs to know on YouTube is what the plan is for the future. We have not heard anything from YouTube as far as like any concrete goal. Yeah. No, for and, all of this. And the problem is right now is is it feels like censorship. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when a person who's reporting something news like that is a independent news journalist um, and they're reporting news and they get demonetized because they're reporting like an ISIS ISIS attack or you know something yeah. like that terrorist attack or but riots see, because but, of Black Lives Matter or yeah, whatever or riots. Yeah. But an actual news channel is allowed to still advertise and be monetized because they are considered a legitimate source. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it, there's favoritism. It, there's favoritism. There's a little bit that's considered censorship, and you see some people end up losing monetization but other people stay on for worse things and some sometimes it, it's there's a little bit leaning in ideology too here that causes some of these issues you know but um with every time something like this happens and people start to feel like uh like it's not in their favor we're, we're a free market capitalistic society so somebody starts to pop up to try to change and hence what happened with myspace and facebook we actually uh youtube has a small competitor on the scene called vidme mm -hmm. and basically when they've started to announce all this stuff they basically put out a video um saying give us your cuss words give us your you know foul language and everything like this we're not going to censor you their only things are basically you know no adult content and there's plenty of that on daily motion folks yeah you know, if you want your adult content, go to Pornhub. Um, and I think it was like basically no, you know, no threats or hate, you know, hate speech per se. And even there's a little bit, a little bit vague, but they're uh, still uh, presenting don't. themselves as being a lot less censorship. It's basically don't be an asshat. Yeah, don't be a dick. So on a lesser, lighter news mm -hmm. than this, because you guys are just going on about this. Yeah. So for the collectors who do, do miniatures and things like that, there's a container store opening in Albuquerque. Oh, good. All the Facebook employees are going to be coming here to go work in Las Lunas. are going to okay. have a place to that, shop. It's so, not Las Lunas, dude. Las Cruces. Las Cruces. Is it Las Cruces? The, the, yeah, because Las Lunas is the uh, one down data south. center. That's the Facebook data center. That's what I'm talking about, Las Lunas. I said container store. Yeah, I, I know. I'm saying, look, folks, 
One second here. This, this is a geography argument here. Las Lunas is 45 minutes south of Albuquerque. So that means that the container store being opened in the Coronado Center in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is going to have a place for all the Facebook employees to come shop at. Understand? Mm. It, I mean, yeah. it, it makes sense. I mean, it does make drive sense. I just buy, want to punch him. If you want to drive an hour to buy a plastic box, I guess. I guess. Let, let me let me clarify this because I am unfamiliar with this, nor was I really like excited for the fact that this kind of thing existed. The container store is a place where you buy containers. Containers. Mm-hmm. So you buy. I'm thinking like Rubbermaid boxes and those little plastic stackable shelves. You can and, get those there and that kind of stuff. So we we had a news a news article and a uh, very excited excited community outpouring for the ability to buy plastic boxes. It's more than just plastic boxes. It's more boxes. than just plastic boxes. It's a giant container store and also you can get in various sizes. So like I was saying for people who do like Warhammer, you have ones that could fit your figurines inside it. And then a bigger container to store those figurines inside it. So I, I'm sorry, I, I can't help but get that, that the image in my head of that scene from UHF where they were doing the advertisement for Spatula City. Spatula City? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, like, it, 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 it kind of is because it's a specialty retail chain that specializes in storage and organizational solutions. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, now, what's, what's funny about this, you know, th- this kind of makes me go, you know, I'm glad we're getting one, but at the same point, it's like, what took you so long? So they've been around since basically the 1980s, okay? Um, they were founded in Texas. Mm-hmm. I saw container stores in Indiana in the 90s up in Indianapolis before New Mexico got one. What took you so long? You guys are being bad neighbors. Come on. We're right next door. I, I can outline it for you perfectly. Oh, what's that? We're poor. We have we have no money as far as as far as any other any outside state is concerned. Whenever whenever any business starts up, regardless of where that business sign starts up, the place they want to go, unless they start on the west coast, is eastward. They want to go east because that's where all the money's coming in. So what? It took Facebook putting in a data center for them for us to get on the map to get a container store. No, I mean, this, I mean they're just filling in blank spaces now. Th- there's like a million. There's like a million people in the metro area, you know, and surrounding area of Albuquerque, New Mexico. We are getting to the point where we can have these sort of things, especially when we have national labs here. We also have, you know, Grants a little bit farther because of Santa Fe and you have Los, Los Alamos National Labs also, besides just Sandia National Labs. There will be people that are going to drive for this stuff. There are people right now that go drive to go to Ikea. And those are in Colorado. Yeah, I remember going to Ikea when I was in Ohio and, yeah. and the actual container store that I went to out or, there. Right. Or Arizona. You know, it's just one of those things. And sure, we're poor. But the problem is, is we're not that whole poor stigma that's still being perpetuated. I mean, you go look around at the at the type of cars that are being you know driven in town. Look, we have an Audi dealership, we have a Mercedes Benz dealership, we have a BMW dealership, we have BMW motorcycles. Well, these are all dealerships. These are all private franchises that somebody managed to write up a business plan and get a loan for, and then they and then they went and they got the cars and they sold them. This is all this is all middleman stuff. You're talking about a corporation coming into the city and opening up a store. And you're pissed because they didn't do it sooner. We have Because any business analyst that comes in and looks at it, as far as an expansion is concerned, a national or global expansion is concerned, is going to look at New Mexico and be like, "Yeah, put off those plans. Look, you're not going to make you're not going to make as much money as if you expand into the eastern through the through the southeast up until up and towards the northeast, where all of the money is." Oh no, I understand, that, but it's like 35 <laughs> years to get a container store for Christ's sake. I mean, we had an Ethan Allen here, which is a uh, which is a upper class furniture store where you can get things specialized with different coverings and everything like that is mm-hmm. kind of custom built furniture to a point but it is a higher class furniture than what you go buy flat packed at ikea and we've had the ethan allen here for quite some time you know there are people here that can afford this it's just what took so long okay well as a lifelong homegrown New Mexican, I do have to say that probably the thing is, if they were doing any sort of survey to see if a container store would be viable here, never mind the business analysis saying that it wouldn't it wouldn't really be a good plan until they had the point where they could just be filling in blank spaces. 
a- asking any New Mexican, hey, do you want another place where you can go and buy plastic boxes? It's more than just <laughs> plastic boxes. They'd be like, no, we already got a Walmart, a Target. You know, we so, can go right, to, so we can go to never Lowe's mind or on Home the lighter Depot. news because that's all I do. Yeah. Sorry, an argument with you guys. Well, oh my god. <laughs> well, well, going back to other companies that are wetting the bed. Which one? Facebook or no, Yahoo? Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo has just admitted that not only has it wet the bed, but it wet the bed two years ago and it's been sleeping in it. <laughs> so, yes, this yeah. is true. Oh, and it's considered the largest data breach ever. 500 oh, yeah. million users' st- uh, information got out by Yahoo. Yahoo yeah. is being bought by Verizon because they've already, like, basic. <sighs> They've been rolling around their own fecal matter for like years now, you know, and they've just now gotten bought by Verizon to be saved. So Verizon's basically taking over Yahoo because they see some business in it. And then it's all like, oops, hey, we've had our data, our user data exposed for two two years. years. Two years ago, 500 million accounts information and some obscure, some obscure detail of information. They don't actually, they're not even sure how, how accurate the information is. It's been stolen. Wow. But 500 million users are impacted two years ago they didn't tell verizon when they started entering into these talks they have confirmed it as of this year as far as the public is concerned yeah which means this has been brewing for two years yeah and i mean come on guys we're at a point in time where we have gone through data security argument after data security argument we've gone through breach after breach this is i mean this is after the big sony online store the sony the sony oh yeah i remember that one network problem yeah and this is after a, another hack of a independent um background check firm that has impacted me personally because information got stolen oh the opm breach yeah the opm breach yeah this is you know we've already had this really big argument going on and we thought we were taking steps to actually fix it and then youtube confirms that all of this has been blown out of the water by their own incompetence you mean yahoo yahoo you said YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Whatever. I'm still, still ragging on YouTube. <laughs> you, you, I was like, I, I know YouTube's done bad things, but I know they okay. didn't do that. Yahoo, YouTube. You have to give me some, you have to give me a break, okay? It's they're they're very similar and my brain likes to do this kind of dyslexic switch sort of thing. And there's Yahoo, been a lot of incompetence this yeah. week anyways. Yeah. So Yahoo in their whatever kind of business strategy, if you can even argue that this is a business strategy, has decided to keep this under wraps as they confirmed things for two years. Neglected to mention it to the people who were buying them. Yeah. yeah that that's they, that they are culpable in probably one of the biggest data breaches ever. I mean, I can sit here and just repeat it over and over again. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. This is, I mean, especially Yahoo. I remember your name in my life before even Google was a thing. And now Google is owns the internet. It's like Google owns three quarters. Facebook owns another quarter. And Yahoo, your name has been in front of me since I was in friggin' grade school. And now you say you've lost 500, uh, half a billion people have had their personal information compromised. To, to put this in pers- perspective, yeah. our federal government with the OPM breach wasn't even this bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, Yahoo has just screwed up worse than the United States government with the OPM breach. So I, I have to say, I mean, as much as I, I, I'm aggravated and everything, I'm being salty about it and everything, I am disappointed. Like, this is this is the ultimate that comes He's down a to good it. Day, a good day, sir. Good I day, sir. I said good I day. I said good day. Yeah. Well, in other things to be disappointed about yeah. this is the old this has to be like the old man we're disappointed, you know, week in news, apparently. This is the back in my day. Yeah. Kind of thing. All right. So yeah. I'm actually very disappointed with Albuquerque business first. Mm-hmm. Okay. And part of it comes down to just the wording in the story. So they put out a uh, they put out an article uh, in regards to Plateau Telecommunications having fiber optic service being expanded out in the eastern part of New Mexico around Clovis and Portales. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is good news for out there, you know, in eastern New Mexico. They have the potential of having gigabit fiber optic speeds at the home mm-hmm. and the future as it's being rolled out anybody getting get a gigabit internet i'm all for yes because if they, the more people that get gigabit internet the closer i get to having gigabit internet but yeah. the first 
sentence paragraph of this story mm-hmm. is what just ruined it for me. Because it Go specifically on. says, if you've ever dreamed of Google Fiber-like internet speeds, it may surprise you to hear they already exist in New Mexico, but only if you live in more rural parts of the state. So hearing this first sentence says, the only way you can do this is by moving to the country. Moving to the boonies. Moving to the boonies. That is so not the case. And this is some of the worst phrasing I've I've seen, Mm -hmm. especially for the, uh, especially for Albuquerque Business First. This is Albuquerque Business First. This is a story published on September 22nd. 2016. Uh, We won't mention the reporter. Yes. Um, And this is what annoys me. There is f- fiber optics in Albuquerque, New Mexico. They have fiber to the home, fiber to the business through CityLink Fiber or CityLink Telecommunications. Mm-hmm. They are in downtown. It's been that way for a while, too. It has it? been that way for quite some time. And this Albuquerque Business First Journal has reported on them before. Yeah. Okay? It's not like they don't know this. They not exist or something. No. They've done stories on them in the past. And then they go right this like... There's nobody else in the area. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's we're, crap. We're a bunch of salty old men. Yeah, you guys are. Yeah. So I What? I, no. I, I didn't say anything salty. No, today. you sat there and you put your face on it. You you're just as you're you're in it the shit with us, man. Yeah, you yeah. put you pulled. Oh, I'm guilty by association. Yes, yes, you are. You're yeah. on the screen with us. You you're put, right there in front of it. So you and you were sitting there just nodding along the entire way. I was just going, yeah. hmm, interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like a psychiatrist would be like, mm-hmm, interesting. Tell me how that makes you. So there is go- there are other options for gigabit internet service in New Mexico. I mean, even here in Albuquerque, you have CityLink Fiber. Uh, you can actually get gigabit to your home or your uh, business. But if for you're home near costs, the downtown area. Right? If you're near the downtown area, yeah. you know, it's it's in that area. Uh, you can also sign up so if they ever manage to get expanded out, but they have it for eighty dollars a month, one gigabit up, one gigabit down. We're not talking with no bundled in phone service, no bundled in have to take the basic cable package for your television, no no contract, yeah, no contract, no extra fees, yeah, no having to call them every three years to argue to keep your rate down, and not hearing the shenanigans of, you know, oh. We're Quest, and we're putting you know fiber out to your neighborhood, which is fiber to the node. Which Quest for, is, is, is around anymore. We're not. We don't want to really name names. Look. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. the Sorry. Telecom- the, <laughs> the tele- like, Wait a minute. Quest isn't around anymore. But the whole DSL thing. It doesn't matter who's doing it. The DSL thing is a friggin' sham too, because yeah. they say we're going to put a node in there, and we're going to promise you, we're going to say that you can get these speeds. Which is like 110 meg or something like that. Yeah, and then you you sign up for it, and you're lucky to get 10. Yeah, because you're not next to the node, or you're too close to the node, or you know, it's just some bullshit reason. Yeah, or they say now we have like fiber fiber optic, and they really don't because it's called to the node. So basically, it's like think of it like this: if you live in one of those newer housing division things, and they say we have mailboxes, you're right. There are mailboxes, but you have to go walk down to one central area to go get your mail versus being delivered right to your doorstep. And that's the difference. And CityLink Fiber has the ability to give you fiber directly to your home. I mean, it is literally installed right on the side of the house. And in businesses downtown, you have the ability to get the fiber optic connections too. And their business packages are a different price than their home packages. Mm -hmm. But still, you have one gigabit down, one gigabit up. And that is phenomenal. Uh, And it is here. And I am sick and tired of seeing people go, oh, we don't have this sort of stuff. We don't have this sort of stuff. Yes, we do. You just got to open your eyes and actually look into it. And then try and help. If if you're not in the area, you need to help them expand. Because it's very obvious. We would have had this by we would have had this by now throughout the entire city, I'm fairly certain. But something has been holding them back. And I'm pretty sure it's been nobody knows they're here. Or, and, or potentially some politics too. Yeah, there's got to be something going on there. Yeah, I, I, but, I think we need to research that a little bit more and really figure that out. Because if there, if we had fiber here, I understand that we're probably like a really laid back and kind of poor community, but still, people would want fast internet as fast as they can get it. It it might you know it might come down to something similar to the uh, to the Lucky Palmer shenanigans that came on mm-hmm. just recently. And we got to talk about this because it does deal with gaming. And so 
Lucky Palmer is the guy that invented the Oculus Rift. Yeah. Okay. And they got bought by Facebook and everything. And uh, apparently... Facebook bought the Rift from him. Yes. Yes. And so he's made lots of money off of this. And basically, he's kind of looked at as the figurehead behind the Oculus Rift. But he's his own person. And apparently, there was some misreporting by the Daily Beast that really caused this to really blow up. Uh, basically, they... Uh, they said that he had given money to a organization called Nimble America and that he was a secret donor that was helping to support memes for Donald Trump's campaign. And basically, mm -hmm. you know, uh, basically do, do that whole thing, supporting Donald Trump. And so this news came out and, you know, of course, the internet goes rabble, 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 rabble. Everything blows up, and we have video game designers saying we are pulling our support for the Oculus Rift, and we are not going to make games for it now because of uh, Lucky Palmer and him giving money to Nimble America and supporting Donald Trump. We cannot stand behind somebody in a product that supports racist and bigots and blah 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 blah. blah. Mm -hmm. Folks. <laughs> You're stupid. Yeah, this is dumb. Okay. Like that that is a that is the dumbest reason ever. Yeah, and on top of it, it was actually shoddy reporting in the first place. The only thing that's potentially in there is the fact that yes, he did give $10,000 to Nimble America, but he's released a statement in regards to this and he's said I'm not a Trump supporter. He votes libertarian. He contributed to Nimble America because he is committed to the principles of fair play and equal treatment. And he thought the organization had fresh ideas on how to communicate with younger voters. Okay. This is his own money. This is not coming from Oculus or Facebook. Yeah. This is him himself. Yeah. This is, this is really like yeah. you pulling, pulling out of Oculus because of something that the inventor of it did is like, that just yeah. makes no sense. He, no. he didn't even say this is from Oculus Rift. He didn't say that Facebook was behind this thing. He took his own money and his own time and did something that he could do with his own money. Yeah. Like, the fact that this got reported on at all is the stupidest thing in the world. You know, if, you know, if you're any kind of, if he was in any kind of public office, having to support his, having to report his financials is understandable. You know, transparency is important and everything like that. Absolutely. He is not part of a public office. He is not part of anything public whatsoever. In fact, the only thing that he could have stood a chance of being public about, he sold to an entity that was already public. Right. And just to people lose their minds because the Daily Beast put this out and said he was nimble rich man, the guy, the, the secret backer on Reddit potentially that's helping to support all of this stuff in the Donald Reddit thread. When it actually came out as being false. Mm hmm now you guys have eggs on your face. And the only th way you can potentially save it some is by going, well, he still donated to Nimble America. And, but come on, he's already said he's coming out. He's had to come out and say, I'm supporting Gary Johnson. He's a libertarian. Mm -hmm. and, you're and, and, it, and all of this should have been none of anybody's business except Lucky Palmer's. Right. And Nimble America's. Yeah, th this is absurd when you're letting, you know, your gaming company, now, now you've made a decision for your gaming company to not support a product that one person is really not fully a part of now anymore and did something on his own. So now you're going on that way. Think about the repercussions of what you've just done by pulling out support here. There, there, it, this can be a cascading backlash because now people will go, well, because you decided to be a jerk here and pull out support on the, on the Oculus. You know, now I'm just not going to support you on the HTC Vive if I own one of these anyways. There's there's been lots of massive backlashes. You it's know, like you, you're letting like you're letting politics decide your business ventures. That's that's bad. Politics yes. and business should be as separate as church and state. And video games should be separate from video yeah. games. What? What? Pol what did I say? Video games should be separate from video yes, games. Yes, video games should be separate from video games. <laughs> wow. Okay. that's Okay, so yeah. no, politics should be separate from video games unless you are specifically, obviously, making some sort of parody thing in politics. But there are game designers that, that make things like that too. But to just come out and be like, we're 
getting our politics all over our video games. It's like, I don't really care what your political views are. I don't really care what your political values are. I don't really care who you plan to vote for or what you feel should happen to any part of society in this world. You're one person and you're in charge of entertaining me. Yes. And now you're (laughs) politicizing the entertainment. So quite frankly, I'm not going to be wanting to potentially look at you for playing a video game in the future. Even if you support my political views. Correct. I don't come to you to support my political views. I come to you to entertain me. Yes. To provide me with a distraction, to take me away from all of this. It's, you know, this is a misstep. This is yeah, it this is, is another, yet another thing to be disappointed about. Yes, that's a horrible um, misstep. So speaking of video games, <laughs> you see all the stuff. I was, I was just deciding to reminisce on classic video games. Oh, And I yeah. came across, uh, I was thinking about video games that are still alive, that's been around forever, and really hasn't changed. And the first one is R-Type. Okay. R-Type has been consistent from the original one, which was on the Sega Master System, no bosses changed, no levels of change, same I, story. I think I confused R Type with Gradius. Are they similar in any way, shape, or form? They're yeah, both. They're both they side-scrolling are. airplane yeah. shooter games. Yeah. See, I was always a fan of, of those side-scroller ones. The ones that I played more were uh, Raiden and Parodius. Those were good ones because yeah. those ones had. And I think this one was 1942. Or something like that. Uh, that's something Capcom. Like bi- that's yeah, that's something Capcom, like bi- but yeah, it is. I don't really care if it's Capcom or not. These are two D sti- these are two D side scrollers. Yes, but, well, or top down. Top, top that's down, top down top versus two D. Yeah, like, yeah. R types. They're they're still scrolly shooty things. Yeah, you know. Mm, yes, kind they of. are. Yeah. Okay. I never uh, the ones that I okay the two D one the the side scrolling one that mm-hmm. I really pointed out was Parodius. Yeah. And I liked Parodius because it had this sort of self referential tongue in cheek sort of arcadey feel to it. Well. I want to get back here over to R-Type because, I mean, the thing is with the R-Type games, mm-hmm. the only thing they're really doing is rehashing it nowadays. It's been like That's more what of a- it's been doing since the original one in Sega Master System. They've, I literally did the research. There's no new bosses in any of them. They're all the same boss, the same story, everything. The only difference is the graphics and the systems change. That's it. Uh, kind of. There's been. Th- what, what, which R type has a different boss in it? So they have sequels. So they have R type two. Okay. Okay, and I think there's like R type final. Um, that's true. I didn't get to play that one. Yeah, that's so, one I did not get to play the R type series. But it, I'm not so, dissing the game because it is a fun game. Yeah, but th- well, I mean, if they've been remaking it this long, it's, yeah, it's obviously the one held uh, up. Super R Type was my favorite. So, what was the other game? You said this was the first one. Uh, that was the first one that worked because it, it essentially what I was researching was uh, games that have the same bosses and the same feel okay. throughout the generations. Uh, of course, the second one is Monster Rancher. Okay, Monster Rancher is obviously what's Monster Rancher? A grind fest. Grind fest where yeah. you, where you, essentially the first game was for PlayStation. And you um, essentially you take you put the game in. Do you know how many games are Grindfest? First off, what is what is that's, Monster that's, Rancher? If you let me speak, I would tell you. Okay, so let- so Monster Rancher is it's collect you collect a bunch of monsters from different media's. So you put the game in, and then you put other CDs in, and it gives you a monster from CDs. Oh, so this is pokemon kind of do you do you want do you want to talk or do you want to <laughs> explain it i mean i you are explaining i'm just making oh, sure okay. that I'm, yes it's it's essentially okay and so and you train this monster to battle other monsters so yeah essentially so yeah and you when get you un- when you unlock except the monster you get your monsters from actual media like i remember putting countless hours of different types of cds in just to get yeah, having your friends bring over their yeah CDs bring it over and, movies yeah and then you have like this list of like monsters okay you get this one from interview from the dracula mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so i wonder what monsters you get from adult entertainment you do get monsters yes yeah as long i as did as long are they tentacle monsters no as long as it's oh. a disc i think what it is is some sort of M- mainly it's actually check. sadly it was just a swayzo <laughs> yeah. the time and uh so this game this monster rancher has made 14 games and has an anime out and there is a talk of new a new <laughs> release of a game coming out and it's still all the same monsters and basically all the same essentially gameplay. yeah it's, so what about the what about these days where discs are almost becoming a uh dated technology that's what I'm kind of wondering where are we going to yeah, get the, where, where are they going to go yeah, with where that? they going to go with are that they're going to put in usb drives well, or they, SD they cards talk or about a new game coming out but it doesn't doesn't say anything. Mm. It's mm. probably for the DS, like the others. And then you have um, F Zero, of course. F Zero has been consistently the same. No, it hasn't. 
If you let me finish, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to If hit I let you. you finish, you're going to hit me. Okay, if you don't let me finish, okay. I'm going to hit you. Either way, I'm going to hit you. So F-Zero okay. is the sort of Mario Kartish kind of... Yeah. Like, that was the first iteration. Well, most of, most of the stages are the same, except for a couple games. There! You just said it yourself! <laughs> it's not the same! <laughs> okay, look. Here's the problem. is The later F-Zeros mm-hmm. became... They have so pretty in, like, loop-de-loops and does other it, weird does things. Does it have a Mute City in it? Is there is there a track called Mute well, that's City? A, that's like saying all of the Mario Karts are the same because they all have a Rainbow Road in it. That's true. Yeah. Actually, I thought the newest one didn't have Rainbow Road I don't Road fucking in. know. Didn't have... Why, why would you so, say that if you don't know? <laughs> look... I'm I'm just saying I was making an analogy. I wasn't okay. making a statement of fact. Okay. Look, F Zero has actually evolved more over time than our type has. Okay, I'll especially because you've gone from yeah. like this. You gone from like what was it the what was it called like the Mode Seven, three D spinny turning. Yeah, the yeah. spinny turny Mode yeah. Seven flat track thing versus to actual true three D versus our type has really stayed a two well, D side scrolling shooter no, the entire 3D, time. They have a three D one. And That's then, dimensions. You could even you could it's even argue dimensions the final. You could even argue that the one the one game that actually took the sort of F zero formula and ran with it and did really well was Wipeout. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wipeout. Wipeout was a good still. One. Wipeout still gets releases. I think they're still mm-hmm. working. They're working on a new generation Wipeout now. In fact. Right. So, I mean, as far as racing games go, I'm fine with any game that doesn't put me into some realistic car on some realistic track with some realistic physics. And then you know, expect me to know how to power slide and brake properly and get through turns and turn into this and find this and get the, and qualify for the license. No. Wipeout is a thing. You're put into a space car or a space motorbike. Uh-huh. And you're taken on a you're, – you're put through this, like, 3D track that's basically this giant tube. It's Stun Runner. And it's it like what Stun really Runner f- would have turned into if they'd actually done anything with Stun Runner. And it goes point. really fast. And it goes really, really fast. Like, I'm, I'm all fine with that. Now, I do understand there are some games that go too fast because there was that one um, N2O. Nitrous or whatever it was on the Dreamcast. Maybe, Maybe. The Dreamcast. I, I think I remember it. Into I watched somebody play that game once, and that game gets going so fast that if you're watching it on the outside, you don't have a clue what's going on. But True. anyways, hmm. well, we are getting close here, but I wanted to make sure we actually fully actually touch on the whole Facebook thing because we just kind of mentioned Facebook data centers coming to Go on. Las Lunas. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I said it right this time. Okay. Las Lunas, which is 45 minutes south of Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. This is huge for the state. Uh, we actually ended up beating out like 20 other states. And the last ones were really between Utah and uh, New Mexico. So they are going to be building a Facebook data center in Las Lunas. They're planning on having it uh, provided by like full 100% green energy or renewable energy as well is the big selling point for it being here in the state, which is very nice. But other things that people don't necessarily know about is the fact that we are sitting on a two big fat pipelines in the state. And one of them is on I-25, which is right by Las Lunas. Mm-hmm. One of the major OC-192s basically that connects the entire internet is goes through our state. And so they will be sitting on that as they build this data center. Well, that's great. I mean, yeah. I, I was, good job, Las Lunas. Great for beating it out. And, you know, it's really great to see some business come in here and, and build it up and everything. And I actually mm-hmm. do not have anything really salty or cynical to say about it. No. Whatever brings more jobs into the city and also increases the tech value of this city. Yes. Is that something we've been needing since we kind of stagnated after we've, we had the lab? Yeah, we had the labs and we had Intel. And then Intel and came then in. HP. And then HP. left. And then... They're still yeah, here. They're They've still downsized. Here. Okay. Um, and Just, then yeah, HP will sprint first, then HP. Yes. And we've we've always been we've always been kind of known as a customer service center. So we've always had customer service for internet providers. And we're, there was a while there where Wow actually had a, a service center here or Gateway contracted to a con a call center here. Yeah, and Gateway had it had a call center here for it's a like, while too. For those people who are not in the know or outside of New Mexico, usually when you call and you demand to speak to a human uh, an American. Uh, chances are you're going to get travel transferred to either New Mexico or there's some other there's another place. Oklahoma's pretty big. Yeah, uh, you're going to end up in one of those places because that's where the American call centers are usually. Yeah. Um, and we were at one point really well known. If we weren't, if, we, if it wasn't our tourist industry, it was the call center industry and bringing in those campaigns to let us do the the phone service for them. I mean, I've worked call centers. I've worked in call centers for several well known brands that I am not about to mention. But 
the Mail Station. That's not a well-known brand. Well, I don't even know. I don't even know. Is Earthlink still a thing? Uh, barely. It's kind of yeah. like AOL is barely still a thing. Okay. But anyways, continue on. So yeah, uh, I think I made my point. If you're gonna, if we're gonna bring in a new tech center and try to revitalize that aspect, I mean, we right now for the last three or four years, arguably, we have been pretty deep into wooing the movie industry yes. and the TV industry and having having stuff like that done here and that's great you know that's exciting getting that kind of stuff going around but it's inconsistent it's it's not necessarily inconsistent i mean it's it's you just don't necessarily always see it because it's throughout the entire state mm -hmm. you know and it is becoming well no it's know. it's an inconsistent industry in that there's there the only reason that they come here is because they're we we either have good location scouting yeah or there's a demand for the kind of visuals that we have in the city here or in the in the surrounding countryside and if a show, a really popular show, that she'll remain unnamed and it ends up becoming very popular and sourced to this place and set in this place. Breaking Bad! And it wasn't even the first show to be set in Albuquerque. Yeah. I will point that out. Yeah. Um, so don't, don't think that it's anything special because of that. The, you know... Bugs Bunny was set in Albuquerque first, right? No. No, that's just... Bugs Bunny never made it to Albuquerque. Oh, yeah, like he, yeah, he, he should have made a left at Albuquerque. He turned right. Yeah, he turned right at Albuquerque. He's never been to Albuquerque. He's always going. He's been to Capistrano, I think. Cap like like verified for sure. You don't want to you don't want to argue Warner Brothers trivial with okay. me, sir. So, um, bringing tech industry into here, having a consistent thing, a growth industry, as opposed to something that is you know they they'll use this when they want to. Yeah, it you know having anything like that and having it increase. The capability of having having it work to increase the capability of tech in the city, like fiber internet, and um, it's a good thing. You know, bringing more, bringing like maybe one of HP's competitors, bringing a Dell center in here or something like That'll that. Never happen. That that one. Yeah. That'll never happen. Well, it might. I like I like your your positive attitude. I'm actually very happen. positive about this. Yeah, I I could see it happening just because HP has been stepping in it so bad lately. But that's why you look at me when you say that's, that. <laughs> Because no you're saying because you're saying that that will never happen, but I'm saying that HP has been stepping in it. So basically, I'm presenting an argument against you on this. That's the other thing is we we really do need this Facebook thing to go off because the 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 places that I mentioned, HP and Sprint, have both kind of snubbed the local community. Yeah, in, Intel was the one. I, I remember growing up, Intel actually helped out schools and donated computers and did a lot of community mm -hmm. work and stuff. Yes, and Comcast when they were first getting established around here as a thing. They went around and did a lot of community stuff and, you know, held like um, community service things and handed out donuts on Black Friday and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, Sprints and HP have con have not really continuously, but they've, they're pretty much their only thing they're known for is snubbing their deal for being Actually, able to Actually, HP come in has here. been doing community stuff. But they also are known for snubbing their deal because yeah. they said that they were going to end up getting so many people into the Rio Rancho area. But they ended up laying off us two or three times versus uh, getting up to the amount of employees that they said they were supposed to. And so finally, Rio Rancho said, you know what? You're not holding up your end of the deal. Give us our money back. Yeah. And because they violated the contract. Yeah, I know. So and HP had to pay it back. So, you so know, we, that's, we need Facebook to come in and basically keep its promises. Yes. That's the only thing that I'm really going to be like a little salty yeah. about. I think they are because we're talking a data center. Data centers are always expanding nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I really think they're going to do it. And this is not the only place they're putting data centers either. But, I, you know, it's one of those things that it's going to probably last. It is going to help bring in other, other work to the area. And I think it's just going to do some really good things and help put New Mexico back on the map because, you know, we screwed up and lost Microsoft. Okay. So yeah. well, I yeah. think that should be about it, right, guys? Yeah, I yeah. think that's. A, I mean, we we have some stuff we didn't really get to. Um, yeah, we'll get. To I don't it know next if we time. mentioned this the last show, but I do want to. I do want to say this. Uh, Godspeed, Chris Messon. Chris Metzen. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, so Chris Metzen has uh, retired from World of Warcraft. So he's the story yeah. designer. Oh. Green Jesus and has not officially just stepped down. He's. I mean, he's. he's more, I mean, he's done a lot of work on World of Warcraft, but he's also worked on StarCraft and all. Of, I mean, all of the Blizzard properties are basically stuff that he's worked on as a creative director or as a story director. Yeah, he's been and, the story director for everything. So it will be a shame to see him 
but he's retiring yeah. to the to the fine life. He is taking you know he's taking a well deserved rest from all of it, good. and you know just concentrating on his family and everything. That's good. So that's why I say Godspeed, good sir. Thank you for the wonderful stories. Yes. Um, so long, and thanks for the fish. Yes, definitely. All right. All right. And other than that, yeah, that sounds like we pretty much got everything. Yes. Don't forget to like yeah. and subscribe. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe. And that's our GATCast for the week, folks. And we will see you next week. Have a good one. There is a lot wrong with it. And the community needs to step back. Any Wizards of the Coast and has been. Get a nice uh, flat USB cable. And then this manual. Now, normally on Jenny Fedora. On-